In today's video, we'll be looking at sea animals going against each other and guessing which ones survive. Who do you think lives through the fight? Oh, and did you know about this brainless predator? Well, all that and more in this video. Moray Eel vs. Octopus Just how sort of a loser can someone or something be? After losing a bout with his octopus, the Moray Eel decides to attack the next best thing, the cameraman. Now, Moray Eels are known to be deadly predators and sworn enemies of the octopi. Which is funny, because if you watch Royal Mermaid, you might get a bit of a different perspective. Anyway, they tend to hide in crevices and ambush their prey with astonishing speed. Once captured between their powerful jaws, there's almost no hope of survival. We prepared a couple of videos for you guys to watch, so let's guess who wins these underwater clashes. First one's up is these two. This Moray Eel seems annoyed that the octopus keeps attacking it from under the coral. I mean, if you're looking at something as big as that, I'd go start my offense, though. It's safe enough hiding down there, right? It doesn't seem like the Moray Eel could fit in the hole, but, uh, wait, there it goes. Twirling and using its power to drain the energy of the octopus. Now, the real question here is, will it be able to- Oh, and it pulled it out. Sad day for that tiny critter. At least it gave its best to survive. The second video is... Wow, that was fast. That octopus managed to dive right on time under that rock. Otherwise, it would have been chow for that eel. After the predator leaves, it goes and camouflages itself on nearby rocks. Finally, we have this clip. Prime example of the ambush tactic. At least the octopus does live. Sure, it may have lost a tentacle, and you heard that rip after all, but it can grow it back. How many did you get right, though? Comment below. Shrimp versus Dragonfish. Now, before we get into this battle, let's recap the two creatures that go head to head in this section. In this corner, we have the shrimp, who plays an essential role in the food chain. Uh, mainly as the food source for bigger animals, mind you, but hey, you know, still works. They're primarily scavengers that scrape algae off of rocks or feed on parasites and necrotic tissue from the fish they groom. However, if no food seems readily available, they will look for prey. When they do, they're pretty smart about it as well. Instead of attacking outright, they find small sleeping fish and get those instead. After all, they can't afford to be too reckless. Then on the other hand, we have the dragonfish, particularly the deep sea kind. This is one tiny predator with massive teeth. Much like the anglerfish, the deep sea dragonfish can produce light through bioluminescence. What it does then is that it flashes its light to attract and disorient prey in the dark waters below. The dragonfish then snaps its powerful jaws once the game comes in close enough. Think about it, it's kind of like the Moray Eel in that regard. So now that we have some background on these two creatures, which one do you think is going to survive the encounter? The answer is... The Shrimp. And if you're surprised by that, so is everyone else. Sure, the dragonfish is small, but it could probably bite the shelled animal in half if it so chooses. Still though, in this clip, the Shrimp drags the fish down to the sand and impales it with its legs, and that's... That's a lot more metal than what I was expecting from a shrimp. Yeah, I suppose this is a prime example of when the going gets tough, you gotta get tougher. Fight or flight for the shrimp and, well, it can't fly, that's for certain. Ew, just look at it eat its stomach. Green Sea Turtle versus Jellyfish. Ah, the jellyfish. We're always told to stay away from these beautiful ocean tellers, lest we want to end up like SpongeBob when he tries to catch them. Though unlike SpongeBob, who is a cartoon character, you could die. What about these turtles then? Wouldn't they die from eating the jellies like cooked spaghetti or cotton candy? Eh, not quite. For some reason, sea turtles don't really get affected by the jellyfish's zaps and neurotoxins. Case in point, look at this one going for the tentacles first. Just closes its eyes and uses its flippers to protect itself. It doesn't seem to be the odd one out of its brethren either, because all these clips show the same thing. Turtles just picking on and eating jellyfish. What's the deal then? Well, the answer is because of its animal class, reptile. What do reptiles have growing all over their bodies? Scales. Now, my fellow nerds and those who watch TV or play video games like me, what's one of the things that we sometimes always have to loot for when we want new armor forged, especially in Monster Hunter? Scales. Got the answer yet? Bingo! It's not that the turtles are immune to neurotoxins, otherwise they wouldn't need to close their eyes while they feast. Their body is just so covered in scales that there's just no way for the jellyfish to sting them. So, despite being painful or deadly to us humans, they might as well be swimming noodles to our reptile friends. But wait, what about their stomachs? Sure, you got scales on the outside, but what about the soft, pudgy insides? Well, yeah, that's correct, they have a soft, pudgy inside, but turtles have a unique way of dealing with the venom. 
they do get affected by it, but in a way that alcohol affects humans. Yeah, they get drunk on jellyfish. No wonder they keep walking to them. Moray Eel vs. Stonefish The return of the Moray Eel with a vengeance. What'll it do this time? Bite off another predator piece by piece, or will it succumb to the poison found on the stonefish's spine? Now before we find out, let's have another bit of trivia here. Typically found in the Indo-Pacific coastal region, stonefish are the most venomous fish ever known. They're dangerous and even fatal to humans, and if envenomed and not treated swiftly, death is likely to follow. Stonefish are also masters of camouflage, able to blend in perfectly with their surroundings. They sit still on the sea floor, usually near coral reefs, waiting to ambush their prey. Yeah, they're really not hunters. For all their survival traits, stonefish only attack when their dinner is less than a body away, though. Pretty lazy if you ask me. Anyway, they also have giant mouths and strong jaws, able to apply intense pressure and swallow their food whole. Now that the information is settled, it's time for the battle. Ambush Predator versus a smaller but poisonous Ambush Predator. Which one's gonna win? And there they go, the moray eel bites into the stonefish, avoiding the poison spine in the process. Looks like the sea ninja is in trouble, but wait, did the moray skin make contact with the injured fish? Oh, I think it did. That's bound to cause some damage, as the poison can destroy red blood cells. Still, the fella doesn't give up. If anything, it looks like it's wrapping its body against the stonefish. Eh, not sure why, a little creepy to watch though. Either way, the end comes soon, and the eel bites into its delicious prize. Well, that actually was pretty fast. Octopus vs. Shark So, octopus vs. a shark. Which one do you think is gonna win? I'd say maybe the octopus has a chance, but it's a friggin' shark, for goodness sake. Like, sharks are known to regularly dine on octopi. That said, I have a good feeling the octopus might at least get a few hits in. What do you know? This clip proves just that. A giant Pacific octopus and a spiny dogfish shark were in the same enormous tank. Great for people who love aquariums and watching sea life, am I right? Well, not so great for the animals in the tanks themselves, especially when one of them is hungry. The aquarium owners and onlookers probably thought that should danger present itself, the octopus would do what it does best, camouflage and look for a hidey hole, or maybe both at the same time. Instead, though, something else happens, and if you're eating, I'd advise you to put that food down for a minute, okay? Don't say I didn't warn you. The octopus, a typically defensive creature, not into the business of shark hunting, gave this one a tight hug. And by a hug, I mean flipped it upside down, and then waited for it to die via Homer Simpson strangling Bart Simpson. You see, what it did is smart. When it puts the shark upside down, it forces it into a catatonic state, making it unable to free itself. No wonder it stopped moving so quickly. I suppose this one octopus saw way too many of its kind out of this guy's relatives and was looking for some payback. Also, this isn't the first of its victims because apparently there was a few other shark carcasses at the bottom of the tank. This video was shot to surveillance what was causing all the deaths and who would have figured this was what the owners would say? Talk about the tables turning. Bobbit Worm I said it once and I'm gonna say it again. I hate worms, so much so that I don't care if they're the grubby ones on land or the nightmare millipedes at the sea. Still, this list wouldn't be complete without mentioning the Bobbit Worm, a long sand strider typically as long as an arm that can grow taller than a man. So what's so special about it that it has to be on this list? Well, it is different. It burrows itself in soft sediment because it has no eyes to see nor brain to think with and simply reacts to stimuli. Yeah, like some animals on this list, this guy is an ambush predator, albeit one that acts more on instinct than thought. And much like them, they have considerable teeth and jaw power. Just look at them, I feel like I could bite my friggin' pinky off. What it typically does catch is fish. I suppose that's something we can say it battles off against, though. If a fish was unaware of its surroundings and happened to overshadow the bobbit worm for a short time, you bet it would get dragged into its burrow to be torn apart and eaten. Still, let me quickly ask you, which do you think typically wins an encounter, fish or bobbit worm? For my reasoning, it kinda depends on the fish. If it's a small fish, it ain't gonna win. Despite the footage showing a successful hunt though, fish are pretty fast, able to dodge before the bobbit even sinks its teeth into its flesh. Aside from that, fish are bright. They engage in mobbing behavior, directing water jets at a bobbit worm to disorient it so that their friend can get away. Sea Lion vs. Octopus 
Boy, the octopus is pretty popular today. While not as popular on this list, sea lions are pretty popular over in our water parks, what with their cute clapping and adorable porking. They even answer math questions, and wait, those are sea lions, right? Or were those seals? Moving on, either way. Oh wait, actually, I just checked their sea lions. Anyway, reminiscing aside, I don't think I need to give you guys another recap of what the octopus can do, so this round all lies on the sea lion. Sea lions are large marine mammals native to all the oceans but the Atlantic. They have external ear flaps and long foreflippers. Of course, they also have their big chests and bellies. What differentiates them from seals is their ability to walk on all fours. They're social and typically seen in groups, whether on land or sea. Currently, there are six species of sea lions, as the seventh has gone extinct, which is pretty sad. Despite their ability to dash 20 miles per hour underwater due to them being strong swimmers, the longest the sea lion can hold its breath for is about 20 minutes. Any longer, and they're gonna go bye-bye. Out in the wilds, they're skilled hunters. They spearfish with their sharp teeth, enjoying a variety of seafood diets, and can eat up to 40 pounds a day. Granted, though, could that be octopus screaming I hear? Either way, even when pitted against the octopus, these guys can take it easy. Just watch this mama sea lion with a mounted camera take care of one stray octopus. She bites off the tentacles one by one, making it far easier to hunt. After all, the mobile prey is dead prey. Next thing you know, it's practically Takayaki, with only a bit of tentacle left to remember it by. Ugh, gross. Now it's time for the day's best pick. What are some of the Goliaths of the sea, though? Whales? Sharks? Dolphins? What if two of those came head to head? Who do you think would survive? Gray Whale versus Killer Whales Orcas, otherwise known as killer whales, are the main predators of the gray whale. They are skilled and adaptable hunters who attack in groups like wolves on land. Usually, this is how their hunts go. First, they pick a victim, which is almost always a calf. Next, they separate it, which takes time, coordination, strategy, and communication, as this process can take as long as six hours. After the calf is split away, they begin training the youngest in their pack. Deliberately, they sever and eat the gray whale calf's tongue and lower jaw. The reason for this is unknown, as there is more meat on the rest of the body than in those two areas. Though I may have listed the process by which they attack, it's rare to see video footage of this, at least until a few years ago. Viewer discretion is advised. While swimming across Monterey Bay in their great migration to the Atlantic, orcas hear the passage of the new wave of whales. Upon their ascent, they notice a mother and a calf and decide to go in for the kill, circling them to block their escape. What comes after, though, may surprise you, given the descriptions I've given so far. However, in this two-hour-long bout, the orcas leave empty-handed as the mother gray whale successfully defended her young. Despite the orcas whipping and giving the calf internal injuries, the calf clings onto life and attempts to get on its mother's back to escape its attackers. Fortunately, it couldn't stay on for too long. Doesn't stop the mama whale, though. As they attempted to drown the calf after hitting it further, the mother continued rolling in between the orcas and its young, preventing them from harming it further. Eventually, tired and annoyed, the orcas leave and the duo escape. Killer Whales vs. Sharks This may be one of the few times you'd see a shark swimming towards humans seeking refuge. Why is that? Well, because they suddenly found themselves on the orca dinner menu. Some of you may think it's not such a big deal, though. After all, sharks are notorious for being apex hunters out in its open wonders. We've seen way too many Jaws films to disprove that, right? Well, here's the thing. If the great white shark is an apex predator of the sea, well, the orca is just more apex-er, if that's actually a word. Let's just take a look at this first clip. We got a pot of orcas that swam around and below a lone shark, giving it zero chance to escape. Sadly, the most the terrified shark could do was go towards the boat in hopes of shelter. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. The orcas close in and drag the shark down into the icy depths, a good chunk of its body in one orca's mouth. God, look at its fins. It looks like it's praying for help. I feel bad for sharks, actually. Now in this second clip, the orca suddenly craves Seven Gill Shark, a shark that is not easy to hunt. The reason for this is because unlike the tiger shark from the first clip, the seven gill here is in fight or flight mode and once again this animal cannot fly. It lunges at the orca despite the massive size difference. Ah, if only bravado was enough to save its life. Seeing the prey attack, the orcas go off and slam the shark up into open water like it was spiking a beach ball to a friend. Soon enough, they rip off its pectoral fin and eat its liver, leaving the carcass to descend into the water below. Man, orcas are jerks. 
Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take 5 seconds to complete. So here's the deal. He does leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Sharks vs. Dolphins uh, oh, watch out, Shark. The Dolphin Mafia is after you. Probably as retribution for the numerous dolphin calves you ate last week. Okay, silliness and dark humor aside, it is true that several dolphin calves don't make it past the first few weeks of its life due to being hunted by sharks. Does that mean dolphins are helpless to sharks, though? Well, the answer here is no. Let's start with, once again, the basics. Dolphins are intelligent creatures with insane mobility and biological ramps for heads. They also have long snouts they can slam into the shark's gills and stomach with echolocation to scan what's in front of them quickly. Their biggest advantage, however, is that they move in groups. As soon as one dolphin in the pond is in danger, everybody else comes in to save their friend. In fact, if they do spot an aggressive shark, the dolphins will ensure it won't escape their clutches alive. Or at the very least, it's very unharmed. That said, it doesn't mean dolphins are invincible. Sharks are silent predators, and they know their strengths and weaknesses fully. If they could stealthily swim away from a dolphin's and its friend's view, the shark could launch a sneak attack. After that, it's just a matter of eating a good delicacy of dolphin. If not, though, let's say it wouldn't be around for much longer. So in a battle between a shark and a dolphin, the victor really depends. Going solo, sharks win by a massive shot. They're slower, but they're immense and quiet. If it's the shark against a pot of dolphins, though, hands down, that shark is gonna die. Honestly, this is just talking about normal dolphins, too. You throw orcas into the mix, you already know what happens there. See you all next time!